<laughs> Hi guys, just waiting for a few people to get on and then we're going to start. So basically, um, we're discussing getting started in e-commerce today, in South Africa specifically, and kind of just demystifying some of the platforms and payment gateways so that you guys can kind of take the leap into getting into an online business. Hey, all the way to... Yay. Okay. Hi guys, thank you so much for joining. Just waiting for a few more people to join and then we can get started. Let's see. All right, I'm also gonna try and keep this live to under an hour because obviously I wanted to be a decent resource for you guys. Um, and yeah, I'll just be able to get back to it um, at a later stage. Thank you, girl. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So yeah, let's chat about getting into e-commerce in South Africa. So obviously with the pandemic, I'm sure you guys have seen a massive boom in online stores popping up. And obviously some people have been in the e-commerce space prior to this. Hey, Renee. <laughs> and yeah, so obviously with the pandemic and obviously stores or brick and mortar stores being closed, people have turned their businesses you know, online and some people launching officially just online on its own. So I think this evening what I wanted to unpack was basically, you know, the platforms that we can use in South Africa specifically, what works and what doesn't work and also what integrates with our payment gateways. Because I think a lot of us also just get a little demotivated because it's just like there's so many things, so many integrations we need to worry about. And I think it can be a little overwhelming at times. So. Um, what was great about this series as well is that people actually have reached out other businesses who want to create a series with me so we are planning to do you know business and taxes around uh, taxes sorry surrounding e-commerce um we'll be doing possibly social media ads um, as well as brand development and maybe we'll look at a customer service series as well but yeah like i said thank you for joining so for those of you that want to be in the e-commerce space or are looking to make some passive income my first Thing is always just find yourself a niche and when I'm speaking about a niche find something that you're specific about so something that you're either passionate about or something that you like so for example kimonos or sneakers or in this day and age everybody's kind of turning into an educator so they are basically sharing their knowledge and selling those courses online and you can too and this can be anything from an accountant to a graphic designer to a teacher actually so being able to put those courses online is a great way. And what's great about it is that it's passive, it's online. You don't physically have to show up every single day to conduct these one-on-ones essentially. So with your research as one, what I, one thing I found that really helped was actually using like family and friends as a sounding board and kind of seeing what they would or would not be interested in purchasing and that sort of thing. So your, your general community essentially is really important in that sense because I remember when I started Cocoa Collection, initially it was a drop shipping store. And the problem with that at the time that I didn't realize was that I actually had a community back home that really wanted to support me but couldn't purchase my products. And later on in the live, we're just going to touch a little bit on drop shipping in South Africa and kind of how you can and cannot get involved. But yeah. Um, and like I mentioned as well, we will be covering a few things. So the first thing I'm going to get into is just a general setup of starting a business in South Africa. So if you don't, and if, sorry, if you do know me, I love bootstrapping. So that means obviously using the resources and the tools that you currently have, instead of trying to acquire funding or, you know, withdrawing your pension fund, this isn't necessary depending on, you know, the product you want to sell or the model that you want to use. So essentially, sorry, I've made notes as well, so I don't go completely off topic because this is such a, a vast topic that, you know, we can sit here for hours chatting about it. But I kind of want to break it up into a series, like I mentioned. So um, with registering a business in South Africa, um, it's obviously easier, especially if you want to connect a payment gateway. A payment gateway does require, to, require you to have a registered business and a bank account. So I always recommend what is it, f &B. they've got the Subsea portal on their website. It's super fast, it's super easy. I've actually been able, recently been able to register one of my other companies and I think it took like two days to get all my documents and everything on board. So 
Um, I think that's about 175 that you pay once off. Um, you submit a few documents and then they will send you through your, your company registration documents and it's super easy. And then another thing that you can have, obviously have to consider with an e-commerce business is your domain and your hosting. So your domain being your www.mystore.co.za, for example. So, sorry, I'm just waving at a few folks. Hi, guys. Thank you for joining. So with registering a domain and um, hosting it, um, your domain, you normally pay a fee um, upfront, and it's normally an annual license. So um, if when I save this live, I'll be saving it to my company page. And in the link in my bio, you'll be able to see a domain and hosting section. So I actually support a POC hosting company, um, actually a dear friend of mine. And what's great is that his hosting is only 49 rand a month. Um, I think you get up to like 100 email addresses. You obviously can host your your website on there. And then a .co.za domain is about 112 rand. So it's super cheap. Hey, Claudie. <laughs> so yeah, but let's, so that's just like the schematics around that. So let's get into some of the products and services that you can sell within an e-commerce um, business. So you obviously have physical products, digital product, products, sorry, and services. So with a physical product, this could be, you know, obviously the biggest rage at the moment was candles and soaps. I'm sure you saw everybody making candles and soaps. Um, it could be sneakers, it could be shoes. Um, you know, it could be like you have a hobby, for example. If you, I don't know, stitch little teddy bears or cushions, these are things that you can sell online as a physical product. Um, some people also import products, that's also fine. That falls under the physical product umbrella, essentially. Then you've got digital products, which I think a lot of people are getting into at the moment, which is your online courses. It's your, you know, digital art pieces. Essentially, a lot of people are doing um, printables for their walls and that sort of thing. Um, Canva templates. What I've seen is that people obviously create templates per industry. So I'm seeing templates for like spas and hotels. And I mean, you can make what 100 different templates and sell it for a couple of dollars online and people are buying it. And again, passive income. You can obviously, you know, how would I say, promote it online, on social media, on your Instagram page, whatever the case may be, just to obviously drive it and get people to obviously purchase your product. And we'll obviously get into some of the little tools, but I won't go too deeply into social media marketing and advertising for e-commerce just yet. Um, another form of digital products would be your ebooks, your principles, like I mentioned, and then I guess I want to put blog sites and subscriptions under digital products, and that would be your you know, your New York Times, your The Economist, where they've got articles, but then you've got free articles as well as paid for articles as well. So that's something also to consider. Sometimes you don't actually need, you can just share your knowledge just in that space. So if you are an accountant or a CA, for example, and you've got great knowledge on, you know, one company where companies or even just personal finance can obviously help them create subscriptions for that. And I mean, people charge two, three dollars a month for that. Again, easy income. All you have to do is just write the content and then going into services. And I've actually got a few case studies of my own clients who finally use the word pivoted <laughs> during this season um, where they were able to, you know, instead of having just normal walk ins coming in and not really knowing what I want to say revenue they had forecasted because they weren't they didn't have things in place that automated bookings and all of that basically with automating your services and getting people to pay up front they were able to guarantee money in the bank so things would be your consulting like one-on-ones um if you have like a calendly account or books is it booksy yeah a booksy account people can pay up front for your services and yeah it's it's easy money um, guys that do like makeup artists, for example, again, a calendar is really great because I mean, one, people can see your availability and two, pay their deposit. They don't have to pay the full free upfront. Same with photography. Um, if you have events, you don't always have to go to a quicker to be able to sell your events online. You can actually just build it into the likes of a WooCommerce or a Wix and sell your tickets like that. Content development is a really great sell these days. Yes. hundred percent the way to like. Guys, to be able to structure content for someone beforehand and selling it, that's why I was mentioning like the Canva templates. It's an amazing product. It's a quick, easy sell. And Canva is so easy to use. I would also highly recommend people getting a subscription to Canva if you haven't already. It's transformed so amazing over the past couple of years. I think I started using it back in 2017. And where it was then to where it is now is amazing. Um, some other um, sorry, service ideas would be obviously photography, one on one coaching and some people who are travel agents, essentially, who do, you know, those group tours. You can also get people again to do a just pay a deposit for 
sorry, uh, for the tour itself, instead of obviously paying upfront like a 13,000 Rand. Right, so that's just to give you an idea of the type of products and services you can sell online. Um, I'm gonna give an example with, like I was mentioning, one of the case studies with one of my clients, um, basically a wine bar in Joburg. Um, and what was great with them, every Thursday they had an event and prior to the, me fixing their website, <laughs> and they actually had a Wix website, so prior to me fixing their website, they would do, I guess, um, they, like manual RSVPs. So they would send out mailers using MailChimp, but they would physically like say, okay, this person said they want to attend and they would only be able to secure payment on the day. And you know people, people, sorry, they're super fickle, they will cancel on you last minute, and there's that money gone. So one way that I ensured that they could actually earn money was one, their tastings, they normally had daily tastings that people could book for. So one, being able to automate that, and again, it was linked to a calendar, so people could see, okay, you know what, there's a space between, I set it up that there was like a 30 minute wait in between tastings, so that the place wouldn't be overcrowded. Then they would obviously be able to check, okay, these slots are available, book and pay for it, and... Obviously, on arrival, they would get their wine glasses, their cheese board, all of that. For the events as well, beforehand, they are now sold out a month in advance for all the events. That's how well the system works. So much so that, I mean, a lot of us were regulars at the wine bar. We can no longer attend <laughs> because we were essentially walk-ins. And that's, that's the great thing about e-commerce. It automates your business to the point that you can actually become comfortable and start focusing on other areas of your business to grow and scale. So some of the platforms um, you, may, you may be familiar with or have heard about it, and I'm kind of just going to break it down for us so that we can kind of see what platform would best suit the products you want to roll out, essentially. So I know some of you had also submitted questions, um, I think last week when I had that little poll sticker, and some people were like, oh, tell us everything, how to start a business and all of that. And that's obviously what prompted the series. So for those of you that did ask how to start from scratch, this is how we're going to do it. Um, like I'd mentioned, I'm a bootstrapper at heart, so I'm going to also identify platforms and workarounds for those of you that, one, don't want to register a business and kind of just want to do it on the side, or two, you don't really have money to fork out every month for subscriptions, or, you know, you don't want to have to pay for a domain. So there are some workarounds that we'll discuss a bit later in the live, and then we'll get back to the different platforms. So obviously, most of you know Shopify. It is, like, number one platform that you can actually host your e-commerce site on. Um, in terms of marketing and the integrations in the back end, and it's superb. It integrates with your Instagram, Facebook, Google Shopping. Um, you've got your Google Analytics. It's amazing. Now, one thing to consider though, um, and again, if you're trying to bootstrap with Shopify, there are free themes that you can use. Most of the paid for themes range around about $180, which is quite pricey, especially because we're in South Africa. And yay for the dollar exchange. So that's one thing to consider. Two, they actually have something called Shopify Lite, but that is to be able to kind of more do your Instagram shopping or be able to embed it onto another site. So I think that goes for roughly about $9. With a basic plan, if you convert it into rands, it's roughly about like 550 rand a month in order to, I think it's unlimited products, if I'm correct, that you can obviously upload. And like I mentioned, it's really a great platform. There are some things that obviously, like I mentioned, are not that great in my opinion. For example, the fact that when you, your subscription for the month, if I've sold a hundred products, not only do I pay my 550 rand, I then pay them a commission or a, tran a transaction fee essentially for every product that I've sold during that month. So I cannot guarantee that 550 rand is what I'm gonna pay and I'm just starting out. And for a lot of people starting out that 550 is maybe what they can afford. So being a, knowing that they might have to fork out a grand, it also is eating into the profits that they've obviously accrued during the month. Um, but another great thing that I did like about Shopify as well was one, setting up your deliveries, being able to do lo um, local deliveries and setting it up per postal code was really great. Um, another was being able to track offline sales. And why I say that is because I know I personally have friends and family that didn't want to go through the store and prefer to buy from me direct, but I wanted to be able to track how many sales I did in the month and having to do that on an Excel spreadsheet is just extra work. So Shopify I would always highly recommend. Um, and also great, again, as well, if you want to do digital products, they also support that as well as subscriptions. Then going into another favorite of mine, which is WooCommerce. So WooCommerce is a free plugin that plugs into WordPress. WordPress, you obviously need a little bit more know-how in terms of how to put together a website. I personally love um, Elementor, which is a website page builder. It's super fast, super easy. However, you would then need to pay a subscription for that for the year as well, which is about 850 Rand. 
whereas I know WooCommerce does have a store shop front. So if you're not too worried about how your store looks and you know the look and feel, there are a few generic free templates that they do provide through the WooCommerce tab. I mean, plugin, sorry. So there's something to that, sorry, to look at in that case. So in a sense, WordPress is free, especially if you, once you've hosted your website, they normally have a WordPress um, plugin in the back end that you can just download to your cPanel, set up your WordPress site, install your, your WooCommerce plugin and actually start, you know, working through all of that. And it's actually free in, in comparison to Shopify, you don't pay a subscription fee. You would then only be worrying about your domain and no, not, not really your domain, but your hosting that would essentially be your monthly fee. Um, and with WooCommerce, and I'll obviously get into the payment gateways that do integrate with these platforms. So I'll get into that in a bit. Um, the next is Wix. Wix took me by surprise. So obviously a couple of years ago, Oh, sorry, what's the plugin called? Oh, sorry, the plugin is called WooCommerce. So it's W-O-O and then commerce. <laughs> but I'll see um, when I say this that I obviously tag most of the companies and plugins that I'm mentioning in the caption. So be with me, but I will try and be as, as informative as possible. Um, so I was explaining with Wix, um, obviously a couple of years ago as well. Mm, not so much of a great platform, but now, the, like, you know, the work and I'm obviously assume all the development that they've put in, the platform is beautiful. If you've ever seen a Wix website, it is seamless. It is minimalist. It is such a stunning program to work off of. And what I like about them as well, similar to Elements, it's a drag and drop situation. So still getting used to, you know, obviously certain features and where they found, but also integrates, has its own app store, similar to what Shopify does. Um, what I like about them as well, they've got the own, let's call it your own little marketing friend in the back called Ascend. So instead of having to integrate a MailChimp and all these other plugins to obviously, you know, chat to your, your customers offline and, you know, prompting them with sales and all of that, Ascend does that for you. And I absolutely love that, that option. And what's also great with Wix, they also offer subscription services as well. And they're the ones that you can kind of sell your services online as well as, again, your digital products. Um, if you'd like the restaurant that I helped as well, um, they obviously during the pandemic, most of you know, a lot of them couldn't stay open, so they could only do deliveries. And what was great about this um, restaurant, obviously they've had like, let's call it a community within the neighborhood that was regulars and all of that. So they were able to support them online. And what we did is that we set up a, uh, what do you call it, like a delivery service um, through Wix. So Wix has this option where you can have a menu, but you can also turn it into like an Uber Eats essentially. Cause I don't know if most of you know, Uber Eats, Mr. Delivery, actually super expensive for a restaurant. You would always see that they have to hike their prices up versus what's actually in the restaurant. So for those of you who are also in, you know, the food and beverage space and you're wanting to, you know, be able to offer deliveries without people having to DM you or having to go into Uber Eats and paying all these fees, getting a Wix site and being able to set up a food delivery is super amazing. And it, again, you pay a few transaction fees, but and your monthly subscription with them, which I think is about $21 a month. Um, they are a bit pricey, but again, for what you're getting, I, it's almost, you know, it kind of balances itself out. Um, another one that is actually a local um, site, which is called Shopstar. Again, a lot of these, and I must also just um, put a disclaimer down. A lot of the sites that I'm talking about now, please note that they always are developing. So if you happen to watch this in a month's time, a lot of these platforms would have developed again. And, you know, what I'm saying might be slightly outdated. And that's also the world we live in, in this internet age. Things are relevant today and tomorrow. It's, oh, completely like phased out. So with Shopstart, actually a local e-commerce company. So if you want to do, you can support them. Um, so with e-commerce, I actually, e-commerce, sorry, with Shopstart, I actually recently tried the e-commerce platform with Coco Collection. And, you know, with my brand, obviously I was able to, try a bunch of platforms during this time because I wanted to see what worked, what didn't work. And I think that's how it came about knowing about all these platforms and, you know, the different functionalities. So with Shopstar, um, slightly limited um, in like what it can and can't do, but it doesn't take away from the fact that you can sell your products. They are adaptable blocks as well. They also have a drag and drop system. Um, you can do Facebook, Instagram, Google Shopping, and they've got a WhatsApp business that they integrate into. Um, just trying to think what else. The only issue that I did have with them is that one, there's really no integrations. Even with the, uh, what is it, the email sign up, you physically then have to take those email sign ups and then take it over to your MailChimp list, which is a bit of a drab. So there's no automation in the background where somebody had, you know, a checkout cart, abandoned cart situation, or they haven't shopped with you in three months and maybe you just want to prompt them again. So those are things to consider. So I always say, 
kind of look at the product you or products you want to sell and how you want to engage with your community because that's super important in choosing the right platform. So um, with Shopstar, and that's also great, is that they actually have a drop shipping feature for South Africa. And I'm going to get into that when we speak about drop shipping in a bit because, again, there are some pros and cons to it and limitations, essentially. Then next is Yaga. Now, I know you're going to be like, but clear, well, that's like where we sell secondhand clothing and, and, and. However, I've actually seen quite a few businesses selling first-hand goods, selling makeup, you know, selling like garments that they would have made themselves, so some fashion designers. Um, and I know obviously the categories on Yaga, they are household items. They are, I think there's electronics as well. So, and again, I'll tell you why Yaga actually works out quite well, especially for those of you who don't have you know, quote unquote, startup capital, or don't have that much money to kind of play around in this space. Then we've got Equid or Equid, however you want to pronounce it, it's E hyphen and CWID. I'm sure some of you may, may, may have seen ads on Instagram and YouTube, they're also kind of all over. What I like about them, they've got a free account, like a lifetime free account. I think you can do up to 10 products with them for free. Was it 100 products? Sorry, I need to just clarify that. But what I like about them, the only thing with a free account is that you can't, um, what is it? You can't, uh, how to say, do Facebook shopping, Instagram shopping that they don't support on the free plan. Obviously, the, the more pay, the more payful plans, they've got different features and you can kind of scale that way. Um, what else was on there? Oh, yes. Um, they obviously integrate with the payment gateway. And then what's nice about Equid as well is that they can also integrate into a WooCommerce or a different site if you don't have WooCommerce plugged in. So like a WordPress and all of that. So super clean, um, very easy to use. But um, again, it depends how... And it's a very basic site, like very, very basic. But again, if you're not too worried about how it looks on the front end and like that sort of thing and pop-ups and, you know, all of those mailer type things that you would want to worry about from a marketing aspect, then Equid is also a great platform to use to get started on. Then we've got Etsy, which I'm sure everybody's heard of. Um, Etsy is actually really great. Um, I mean, yes, you can sell physical products from South Africa, but it's not that big, obviously, because it is a UK based company. But what I have noticed is a lot of um, people in South Africa, uh, sorry, selling the digital products. So in my case, I have digital Moyo. So I sell digital art and illustrations. And there's quite a few people in that space as well. Then you have people who do printables. So they've got journals, they've got eBooks. An amazing space and Etsy is free every month I think last month I paid nine rand for my two listings guys nine rand is nothing there you can have the option of setting up a website through them but it's really not necessary what's really great with Etsy as well is that they actually push your products for you so they'll run ads and only if you sell a product through the ad do you actually pay I guess like a little commission to them for that so it is a great platform as well to get started on again if you don't have the funds to get set up in e-commerce um, another one which is really great. So some of you would have heard of something called a marketplace. So all way to that's Anya. She has Libo Market, and also for those of you that have not signed up for our webinar on Thursday, please do. <laughs> um, so you've got a Libo Market. Uh, obviously, Take a Lot has moved into the space now. Essentially, it's where you have lots of buyers on the platform selling their products. That is what a marketplace is. Um, I know we've got Brown Sense. um, I'm trying to think of a few others. We've got Faithful to Nature. So essentially that's the kind of model that they they work around. So with, sorry, with the marketplace, one, I wanna say one platform that I've really loved is actually Yocart. I think it's an Indian based company, but it is such a powerful tool. What I like about them is that not only do you get a marketplace structure and website, you actually get an app as well. So you know how like Superbulous and Take A Lot get an app? Same, you'll have your own branded app. And I think Equid and their business plan as well has a branded app for you as well. So these are things to think about because then you don't have to, you know, go through this whole app development phase, which is thousands upon thousands. So, Another big one um, is actually big commerce, but that's more for if you personally, I found if you want to get into drop shipping. And then there's a little one that I've discovered the other day called Buy Me a Coffee, which is super cute for creatives. So if you, for example, I found a guy last night that he sells his woodworking course on what is this on Buy Me a Coffee. So you can have a subscription model on Buy Me a Coffee. Um, can you make adjustments to that? Yes, you can. So as you make adjust, so essentially how how to put it, uh, your marketplace is basically a mimic in the app. So it's basically just a bite-sized version of it. So whatever you do on the website, you can do there. But again, customize it with your logo, colors. Um, again, if you've got specials running, you can you can kind of integrate all of that. So yes. And again, with Yocart, 
It has all the integrations in the back for email marketing, you know, advertising, all of that. So it's a brilliant, brilliant pl platform to, to look at. Um, and Yocart being Y-O hyphen K-A-R-T. Yeah. I'm sorry, I was explaining about buy me a coffee. So again, for creatives, um, again, if you have a goal and you want to buy, I don't know, a laptop or you want to upgrade your gear as an artist or a graphic designer, you can use buy me a coffee for that. And what it is, is basically there's one, two dollars and five dollars and then there's an open bracket option. And what's great about that is, you know, people can just support your artwork. They don't physically have to buy. Another lady I had offered two free designs. And then she's like, if you want to subscribe, I'll send you like monthly artwork that you can obviously print out or whatever the case may be. So again, buy me a coffee. Um, it's quite an interesting platform because when it's free, you don't need anything to sign up. And again, another great platform for people who, again, who are just starting out. And guys, when I say in South Africa, there is money to be made. Don't let people tell you that this country is going to the dogs and and and. Please don't listen to the negative Nancys. There is enough for everyone. And honestly, if you just take the time to do some research, if you, you know, kind of tap into your, your passions and your creative side, you will definitely find a way to make money, 100%. So um, going into subscriptions now. So a subscription being a recurring payment, for example, like I mentioned, New York Times and, you know, The Economist, that's a form of a subscription. I know for a good leave recently launched their subscription model where you can get your CBD oil once a month and without having to, you know, constantly purchase it. And that's another way to obviously streamline people to constantly come back and, you know, spend money with you. Um, I'm trying to think of subscription, subscription. Oh, like my tribe. Sorry, hi, you too. Um, my tribe as well had a subscription model at one point as well that included a box. Um, so like of little things. So it could be the kombucha that they were trying for the month and like little products to try. So these are all forms of like subscriptions, right? So when doing subscriptions, this is where you need to consider the platform. So the likes of a WooCommerce, Wix and Shopify are your three base platforms to run a subscription based model. Um, that being said, with WooCommerce, there is a slight, you know, catch. They have a subscription add on, which is about $259. It's super pricey. So again, if you can't afford to do that, don't do WooCommerce for a subscription specifically. Um, with Wix, it's integrated. But please note, and what we're going to discuss now is also there are only certain payment gateways that actually allow subscriptions or recurring payments. So it gets tricky. So it's like a whole matrix. <laughs> and then with Shopify, um, same concept. They have also, also have it built in. So it's not extra. It's just part of the product offering that they have. So when we talk about payment gateways, that is your essentially where you fill in your credit card from a consumer's point. That is what a payment gateway is. And essentially, you get to your checkout card and that's how you process the payment. So obviously the big ones, as some of you may know, Yoko, which is doing amazing things in the SMME space. Um, they obviously have the, the card machines um, for all business sizes. So for those of you who also want to be able to take payments, if you are at a market or you have, you know, a, a, a little shop somewhere, not sure, but Yoko, I think at one point they were running a sale and the little card machine was going for like 200 bucks. Super easy, super affordable. Then we've got PayFast, also a goodie, um, but also free as well, which is great. But they require, how would I say, they set up in the background is a little different, but they also um, allow for subscriptions. I'll kind of explain the PayFast thing in a moment. With PayGate, um, that is a paid for service essentially with them. Um, PayGate is also a powerful tool. I used it in the beginning when I first started with dropshipping because they had a a currency converter built in for me, which I really liked. And they were about 113 a month. Um, and that included my transaction fees. So they kind of did it upfront. So you didn't have to worry about like sneaky fees, which is really, really nice. We've got PayPal, but guys, listen, nobody uses PayPal in this country in the sense of being able to shop. If you do, I don't know why you would. It's very big in the US. Obviously, if you've got a drop shipping store and you are selling internationally, then PayPal 100% will work. Um, then you've got Peach Payments. Also a paid for service similar to Paygate, um, but with Peach Payments, you would need to contact them and they'll kind of inform you how much the, you know, your monthly fee is going to be. They also accept um, subscriptions or recurring payments. And then um, for those of you, and I was speaking about a Yaga and a Shopstar, if you don't want to, you know, register for a payment gateway, because obviously you need a registered business for that, um, Shopstar has Shopstar Pay. Um, and then Yaga has the Yaga wallet. So essentially they accept payments on your behalf and then pay it into your bank account. Sometimes it's once a week or whatever their payment schedule is, you'd need to find out from them. Um, 
but yeah so if we're talking subscriptions so if you're looking at a woocommerce or wix and a shopify um with wix you can use yoko but unfortunately they don't do subscriptions yet and i'm sure this is probably something that they're working on one thing you can do with wix and i'm not sure about with woocommerce but i know with wix you can obviously bid for certain features to be included at some point um so at one, i know we were obviously asking for other integrations in terms of the payment gateways because at one point peach payments was the only payment ga um, gateway in south africa that they were using and it was not the greatest personally have you used to check out i actually haven't used them yet i actually have seen them but i haven't used them yet um then with payfast so payfast um can be used i'm just trying to think payfast yes sorry with woocommerce and yeah, they can be used with WooCommerce. My, uh, and they actually the only one, not the only one, sorry. They can also do subscription services um, or recurring payments. So if you want to be able to use PayFast in Wix, for example, and you set out on using PayFast for your Wix account, um, you can, and th this is where it gets tricky, you can actually use the open API, but get somebody who is a developer to be able to connect that for you in the back end. I couldn't do that. I had to get somebody to do it for me because obviously be it you in my case, some clients are very hard set on certain plugins and in this case, payment gateways that we had to find workarounds for it. Um, another one that takes subscriptions, like I mentioned, was Peach Payments, again, can also be used for Wix. Um, what is the best payment gateway? Sorry, it's, I'm just trying to read your message. Uh, what is the best payment gateway to use on Wix for South Africans? So Yoko uh, integrates with Wix, they're free. But again, they don't do recurring payments, so you can't do a subscription model with Yoko. Um, and then there is obviously, like I mentioned, Peach Payments who do the subscription, but it's a paid for model. So that's with Wix. Um, right. Then we're going on to people who basically don't want to either register a business or don't want to register a domain. They just want workarounds to find the cheapest way to get started up fast enough. So we've got Equid, like I'd mentioned, They've got a free life plan, um, but you do need a payment gateway for them. So that's the iffy part. But you don't need a domain. You can have a basic, you know, subdomain with them. Then we've got Shopstar. You can get set up with them in like five minutes um, and you can just use Shopstar Pay. You don't actually have to integrate um, your payment gateway, essentially. Highly recommend PayFast. Transaction fees aren't hectic. Yeah. My only, oh, sorry, that was the thing. My only thing with PayFast that I got like a little annoyed with. So with Yoko, they obviously process your transactions and then two or three days later, it then features, it like pops up into your account. We with PayFast, it goes to PayFast. Then you have to request a buy, uh, not a buyout, sorry. You have to request a payout, sorry, not a buyout from PayFast. And then it's like an, another couple of days. So it was just a lengthy process for me to get cash out of them. And I was just like, oh, but not, a, it's really not a terrible platform. It's just, those were my frustrations. Again, not everybody has the same frustrations. Um, right. And then like I mentioned, Yaga. Yaga, for, like I mentioned, you don't have to sell secondhand goods. There are, um, sorry, there are stores on Yaga that are selling firsthand goods. I've seen, like I mentioned, I also see people selling, um, obviously, their own clothing, i.e. they've made it, um, makeup, that sort of thing. Um, I didn't like pay, pay fast for that too. Yeah. You see? It's just a little iffy. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned, um, platforms are being updated all the time. So if you get again, basic things, if you want to get started out, Equid, Shopstar, Yaga. If you have money and you can splash a little, maybe do a WooCommerce or do a Shopify or a Wix. Those are always my favorite. And let's chat, sorry, quickly hydrate through all this talking. Let's quickly discuss drop shipping. So like I mentioned, um, drop shipping, there's Shopstar who does drop shipping in South Africa. It's not as great as the dropshipping that we obviously see through all these YouTube millionaires or e-commerce millionaires, e-com king. So I've watched all these guys' videos. I've signed up for webinars. I've done the homework. So initially, like I'd mentioned, my store Coco Collection originally was a dropshipping store. And with that, I mean, there was, you know, what is it? Print on demand integrations that I had, which were fabulous. So you can sell t-shirts and you physically don't have to touch any inventory. You literally just pop on a design and whoever orders it obviously it gets delivered to them they manufacture it for you however the problem with the print on demand items especially because it is being fulfilled overseas the courier fee is super high um you know versus what the actual product costs so for south africans it's really i mean if any of you are on here and are wanting to do a print on demand please do like so much money can be made from that um and i know there was another one 
starts with a G, so it's just slipped my mind, but they had quite a few items. They had everything from like mugs and yoga mats and socks that you could brand. And again, you never actually had to hold stock, which was fab- fabulous. So, so going back to drop shipping. Um, so with Shopify, you've got Oberlo. I think that's how you pronounce it. And it's, it actually integrates with AliExpress. So those of you who are familiar with AliExpress, it's a massive marketplace in, I think it's China. I might be incorrect, but it's that side of the world. So essentially with AliExpress, Oberlo, actually there's a, what do you call it? A desktop, I don't call it a desktop, sorry. It's, it's a Google Chrome app essentially that gets plugged in on the back end. So if you are on the AliExpress side, you can automatically add things. Printify, oh, there's also Printify as well, yes. So there was Teespring, there's Printify. There's another one as well with a G. Can't remember. Um, thank you, uh, Mikhail. Yes, China. <laughs> um, so, like I was mention, sorry, mentioning, um, Obolo is actually an extension. That's it's a Google Chrome extension. There we go. Words. Um, that when you are on the AliExpress site and you happen to start finding products that you like, you can automatically start adding it to your Obolo backend, which then links or oh, syncs essentially with your um, Shopify store once you've pushed it through. What I liked about Obolo though was the fact that. For instance, I at one point was pushing kimonos. So I got a whole bunch of kimonos onto the back end of my Obolo. And what's great with them is that, I mean, and you know, China's like super cheap. So, I mean, it was like $2 for a kimono. I know, right? Um, and what was great is that it pulled through all the information. So the images, the description, you could edit the description there, number one. You could select which images you wanted to use and which ones you didn't want to use. And with the pricing, it will actually benchmark and tell you, listen, you know, there's a competitor that's actually selling um kimonos for $15 and maybe I was trying to sell it for $10 and they would like automatically push it up for me so Bolo is a really great interactive tool and it was great in managing you know my my stock let's call it that and whenever somebody ordered from me though because I mean I briefly had this drop shopping site for a month and then I realized but my clientele is in South Africa um I think I had two or three sales with a drop shopping site and what was great is that with Obolo they send the request through to the the seller on AliExpress, they tell them, listen, it's a drop shipping store, don't include invoices or any pamphlets, um, just package it as is and send it off. And it was great, it was seamless. The only problem is, and I say problem, it's not a problem if you're like super committed, I don't think I was, because I was just like, this is becoming too much. The thing is, you're gonna have to obviously then start pushing your social media ads to the US, to the UK, or wherever your market is. Um, I obviously base it on the US and the UK, because if you look at the shipping from AliExpress, um, I know the Netherlands was super cheap as well. There's obviously certain countries or yeah, let's say certain countries where it's cheap to ship to. South Africa, however, is anything from 200 and up. So that's why drop shipping with AliExpress did not work for me or for the people that wanted to support me in South Africa because who's going to pay 200 plus if not more for shipping and then the products like $2. It just doesn't make sense. And then also with AliExpress, you're waiting for like a good month, if not longer, for these products to arrive. So, and you don't really have control and having to manage your customer service levels that way is just, it's a bit daunting. Um, for those of you that are wanting to get into the dropshipping space, um, and for instance, you want to be able to source really high quality or maybe just unique products, you can actually go onto Fiverr um, and basically pay someone, I think like $10, and they can go and source at the factories in China on your behalf. Tell them what you're looking for and they source it for you. If you want it branded or in this case white labeled, these are things that they can set in place for you. You pay them a certain fee. Um, white labeling, for those of you that don't know, it's obviously, for instance, this bottle and then Nike purchases it, and then they put their name on it. So essentially that's white labeling. So we can all have the same bottle but different names. Um, some people do it for beauty products, those of you that want to get into the beauty space as well. Locally, I know about one company that I dealt with, um, but they were, like I said, local. They they weren't in, let's call it, when I say chemical cosmetics, in a sense that they weren't an Estee Lauder type brand um, that, you know, there was like a whole, how do I put it, there wasn't... <laughs> There wasn't like hectic formulations that went into the back end. Essentially with them, they focused more on natural skincare and that was the space I initially also was going into. Guys, sorry, I dabbled in this last year when it came to e-commerce. I have been trying my hand in everything. (laughs) So um, they're actually called NYK Beauty and I'll also tag them in the the caption below when I eventually post this later on. Um, So they're also a wholesaler. So they would sell like sheer butter, like five kilograms. They can set up your whole beauty line for you. Those of you that want to sell lashes and makeup and lip gloss, they do all of it. You can choose your tubes. You can choose your different colors. They are amazing. Also women-owned 
I think it's a black woman owned business actually. And they're phenomenal. They can also source packaging for you. At one point I was looking at little tubs to order in. I think they were bringing it from Namibia for me. Amazing service, great company. And also they've got little starter packs if you want to kind of test drive their products as well before you put your name on it. Um, so that is an option for you, for those of you that still want to get into the natural skin, skin, skin uh, sorry, skin, skin, ah, skin care, sp <laughs> this is just leaving me, sorry, skin care space, Whoa, tongue twister, any case, so, um, with drop shipping as well, please give us a drop shipping course, we want to make sure money, yes, um, yeah, that's another thing I'm also getting into, so Think Fic is actually running an accelerator program, so for those of you that want to sell your online courses, or you just have, um, you know, Sorry, hold on. Sidebar, white labels are very popular in financial services as well. You can say, yes, I saw that as well. Especially when I typed in like, obviously guys, you can just Google anything. So, you know, 100%, even in the, the tourism space, like white labeling, um, travel agency, like booking portals, you can white label that. I was obviously, I'm still looking to start my own travel agency. I just kind of put it on hold for a bit because it got a bit overwhelming. Um, but yeah, so there's actually quite a few things that you can white label. But yes, thank you for that, Miguel. Um, Right, sorry, back to dropshipping. Um, right, so again, as well, so again, it's great in terms of just being able to set up your ads, and then obviously you can get money in that way. I know my dad used Big Commerce um, for his dropshipping, and what was nice with um, Big Commerce was that there's actually an affiliate network for people who want to dropship. So he had a like a green store essentially, so he had you know all these healthy, or organic essentially, and green. Um, you know, baby products, cleaning products, um, meal delivery service that he did in the U.S. And that actually brought in quite a bit of passive income for him and it was really great. Um, I'll try and remember the name of the platform. I think it was called Digi, was it Digiform24, something like that. But again, I will just tag it at the bottom for you so you guys can check it out. Maybe become an affiliate for big commerce um, and, you know, being able to sell through their platform with dropshipping. Um, what am I else am I missing on? Oh, Shopstar. Yes, sorry, I was mentioning Shopstar because it's local. So you can try Shopstar. My problem with Shopstar was that you can't... With dropshipping, you want to have quite a few vast products, right? Obviously, in the US, they can do quick, you know... How would I put it? Um, they can do... What is it? Like one product websites and quickly sell it because it's trending and then the website's closed after two months because, you know, it's obviously hit a curve and now everybody's selling it. So that's how fast things move overseas. Unfortunately, here we're still getting there, but it's fine. I do trust that at some point we will get there. Um, where are we? Shopstar. Yeah. So with them, obviously, if I, I'm, again, with Coco, I am also a seller as well as a, you know, marketplace seller. So being a marketplace seller is that I'm giving you my product to sell and there's a commission on it that you can earn. Now, unfortunately, some some of these businesses are only giving you 10%. So you might only earn like, like nine rand, at most maybe a hundred rand, depending how big the items are, if it's household items, that sort of thing. So that was my only concern with Shopstar. The other thing as well with Shopstar is that their basic plan only allows for 10 products. And I think it's like 220 rand a month. Now, for somebody who's wanting to do drop shipping, 10 products isn't enough. And also just on a side note with drop shipping, please also have a niche. Like I spoke about when we started this live, have a niche with any of your businesses, because that's how you're going to be able to garner community and, you know, being able to research and, you know, find out what it is that your community wants. If you want to be a general store, fine, but mm, you're going to have to do a lot of legwork. Sorry, um, with cosmetics and edible products, what is your advice on quality checking? I would love to sell wellness products, but the thought of white labeling products I have not produced or certified. Fix me. Okay, so I must tell you, so with white labeling, um, for example, with cosmetics, there was a, I'm also going to tag, oh, oh, I can't tag them, but I'll give you the company name at the bottom. They were a skincare, you know, beauty company in China that I was liaising with, because at one point I was wanting to import my products instead of making them myself. Yes, at some point I was making my own like skincare, guys. I did the course, I did everything, but it's not sustainable for me. And because I've got other businesses and I physically cannot be, you know, woodworking or, you know, pouring things into bottles and labeling. It just got too much. So there's obviously certain things that I've focused on now with Coco that obviously just make it easier for me to streamline. But in terms of you know, with cosmetics. So again, with this company, you could order sample packs and be able to test them out before actually, you know, deciding to go into a deal with them. I.e., you know, there's always a minimum order quantity. Please also check that with them. What is the minimum order quantity? You want to be able to go for a place that, you know, maybe they do small quantities like a 50 or 100, which actually saves, for you, which actually helps you in the end because not all of us, like I said, have capital upfront. 
um, to be able to invest in white labeling because it's quite an expensive process. Um, but yeah, a lot of these companies, sorry, it's a, um, you can actually just order samples online and be able to test them out first and be like, okay, I want to stock this or I don't want to stock this all. You know, um, what I liked about this company was that they could also formulate something I was interested in. So if I wanted something with like ginseng in my face mask, they would formulate it, but obviously at a fee. So these are things that you can always discuss with suppliers. Um, who else is on you? Sorry, just waving at people. Um, what else can I tell you about drop shipping? Um, blah, blah. Oh, sorry, back at Shopstar. So my only problem with them was that the initial, let's call it, um, plan of these is 220 rand that only allows 10 products. And like I was mentioning with dropshipping, you cannot just have 10 products. It doesn't make sense for your store unless you are just selling, I don't know, one pair of sneakers and you can push it through that way and you're happy with it. Great. Um, I know some of you again also asked where to get products. So this is kind of falling into the dropshipping space. Um, some of you can also apply for your import and export license. Essentially, in my case, I'm applying for my import license. Um, I know it's like a little SARS form. Sorry, I don't have it here with me because I'm actually in Cape Town at the moment. What about the app Buy My Stuff? Sorry, Tandy, what is app Buy My Stuff? I, okay, you can tell me about it in the comments, sorry. Um, so, sorry, being able to import. Yeah, you do need an import, importer's license. Please also note, get yourself a clearing agent if you are going to import. They obviously assist you with customs and all the tax and revenue stuff that needs to happen on that end. I am not an expert. This is also why you pay people to do certain things. Um, again, with wholesalers, these are your guys that you want to reach out to, especially if you want to, again, um, make either make your own products or you just want to buy it in bulk. Um, for example, I don't know if Claudie is still... What do you mean I need a license? Yes, I'm sorry. What I've done though, and it's a sneaky workaround. So for example, my hemp oil, I actually imported from, it's from Canada, but they have a store in the US. So I actually import my hemp oil from the US, but I then just get it in smaller quantities as if I'm just a normal consumer, because I do sell it in bulk, but not like to the point where I'm buying like a hundred gallons or something like that. Um, and I import it that way and I pay like 700 rand on, I guess, duties or two, you know, to customs essentially um, so there's a workaround in that but again it has to be in very small quantities and unfortunately with customs here yeah, they also check things and some of them want to keep your stuff so it's very tricky but yes um, you do need a license but hi Chloe oh sorry what I was gonna say with Chloe she's got um, tippy the tippy toes yes um, which is her shoe company um, also please check them out I love how I'm just putting people on I'm not alive <laughs> Um, please check them out. She actually um, also white labeled um, her shoes from a wholesaler, if I'm correct, that was the model that they had gone with. Um, beautiful shoes, absolutely stunning, and for also all shapes and sizes. Um, but again, something where you can also just put your branding on and sell it. Um, another one, oh, sorry, I'll make your own. Oh, sorry, emailing supplies, like I'd mentioned. Reach out to people. What I had done as well. Oh, yeah, sorry. So my friend Kim, she was the one that actually <laughs> helped me clear stuff. She's like, if it is 100 gallons or more, SARS will fine you. You see? So Kim is also my expert person when it comes to importing and exporting. She's sort of in the business, but it's more logistics than anything else. But she's still my person when it comes to finding out about these things, about import, imports and exports specifically. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that you work for Santova, but check them out. They are a logistics company. If you're also trying to source certain things like packaging and... I know they work for the likes of, um, of famous brands and all of that. Sorry, I digress. Um, but yeah, um, and then if you just want to quickly touch on shipping, i.e., you know, being able to ship products to your customers in South Africa, there are a few options to look at. Admin is, yes, admin is wild, guys. Running also with e-commerce, <laughs> there's a bit of admin, but once you've set up a lot of the stuff, it kind of just, like I said, it's very automated. Um, but don't ever take your foot off the pedal. Don't be those people. Please be very hands-on in your business as much as possible. Know what's going in and out of your company. Know the cost of your stuff. Know what your profit margins are. If you guys want, I've got a template that I've actually used for my own products where I break down the cost price. Um, I include the packaging and everything, all the little frills and bells and whistles that I normally include with my packaging from my thank you cards and stickers. I break that down. I then obviously put my markup and then I can see what my profit margin is. Please keep track of these things. You'll be able to obviously if you're looking for investors, these things are super important. We need a course, please and thanks. Lol. Okay, guys, once I'm done with my Think Think Accelerator program, I'll hopefully have a course for you after this. But yeah, if you do want a course or if you want to do one-on-ones, I don't know, let me know in like the comments and we'll figure something out. Um, but back to shipping, right. 
So obviously, again, if you are just starting out, you don't always have money to put forward to like a courier guy. I know they allow you to sign up um, and you kind of pay beforehand. I think it's like a thousand, one thousand two hundred rand. And that kind of accounts for a couple of parcels um, that you can send out through them. So they'll come and collect and send it out um, on your behalf, obviously, and deliver it to your customers. Um, but if you don't want to go that route, Aramex, it's 99 rand delivers nationwide um and i think it takes like one to two days or one to three days being hands-on can really make or break your business yes oh guys again always to run through libra market um also uh, she promotes black female-owned e-commerce business again it's really great to actually get on a marketplace again also if you don't you know want to do the domain or have to set up a website the likes of a libra market is amazing you just send her your images your prices she sorts out and obviously you send her a few of your products because she then ships it from her warehouse um, or which I'm just going to tag you in, you know, in the comments after this, so people can follow you and have a discussion with you about your marketplace. Um, again, sorry, back to shipping. We've got Aramex, we've got Paxi. Those two are actually your most feasible options as a startup in terms of e-commerce. Paxi is about 59 Rand a month. Um, and we've got, yeah, Aramex, uh, which is 99 Rand, but that's like one to three days with Paxi. It's like seven to nine days. It's a really long process um, but there is a shorter one which is also again like around about 99 rand which is like one to five no three to five days sorry not one to five days um, then there's another one which is really it was let's call it groundbreaking it's called you africa it's actually an extension for shopify but for south africans um, in a sense that you can get the cheapest courier fee on the day depending on you know what it is you're shipping and obviously the sizing and all of that and they would be they're going to obviously come and pick up your orders and ship it for you they do the labels all of that it's fab uh, check out you africa if you do have a shopify store and again looking to scale and then for those of you who obviously have clients in the area see if you can't set up um a local delivery where you physically just drive out i know at one point i think i charged my friends like 40 bucks um itu is saying the courier guy is amazing Kim is also saying if you know a tax, tax, sorry, tax practitioner, he or she can help you with the SARS paperwork for the exporters and importers code. Thank you, Kim. By the way, guys, Kim is helping me, so you can't have her. Um, what else is Kim saying? <laughs> um, you can register via your personal e-filing profile for an importers and exporters code. Amazing, guys. Okay, so if you want an importers and exporters code, personal e-filing profile, apply for it that way. Um, I just went through Kim because I know people. <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay, sorry, back to local delivery. I mean, I charged, I think, my friends and family like 40 bucks just to quickly drive to them, drop it off, and at least it covers my costs at the end of the day for gas and fuel. But then they don't have to pay those hectic fees. Hectic, I mean, I'm calling it that. Um, again, as well, for those of you that want to include delivery in, you know, free delivery in your, in your store, please consider that you can actually afford to do this. Because one is a chowing into your profit margins, um, you know, an easy way to do it is obviously if you spend 500 rand or more or 1000 rand or more, then you can include it because at least then you can offset it off one of the products. Um, but yeah, I think I have covered most of what I was wanted to cover today. Like I mentioned, this is very high level. We can go much more into depth um, from drop shipping to platforms to integrations. Um, for those of you that obviously I will quickly touch on marketing, please get an email you know, a database essentially build one because that is where you nurture both your frequent clients or customers, if you want to call them that, and your cold um, or your prospects essentially, because them signing up to your email database through a lead magnet or whatever um, is them kind of interested in your product and them kind of wanting to see where this goes. Please also know that when you are to nail, yes, I will, but I'm going to save this live guys. So you guys will be able to come back and do it. Um, but what I was saying, sorry, um, lead magnets, email, database. Yes, sorry, you need to nurture that because those are your clients. And as a tip as well, in your store, please always monitor the products that you are selling. And why I say this, there is no shame if a, do drop shippers or e-commerce peeps need investors and why? I will answer that question now. Um, so, oh gosh, no, I lost my thought. Oh, okay, we'll get back to my thought now. Do drop shippers or e-commerce um, peeps need investors and why? Um, not necessarily. Like I was mentioning, you can really do this from scratch. If you are building, um, you know, an insane marketplace that has, you know, all these functionalities, fine. You can get, um, you know, investors on board, especially if there's a lot of coding that needs to happen in the back end. Um, you know, again, 
if you're also roping in people from Africa and you're getting other supplies on board, you may want that, um, you know, I guess that investment essentially. I know there was a company recently that reached out to me. I feel bad, I can't remember them. But they are actually doing amazing things in the fashion space. And FYI, fashion is actually the biggest segment with regards to e-commerce in South Africa. So for those of you who are up-and-coming designers or you can, you know, thrift things, fashion is it. Um, I know last year for 2020, South Africa raked in 4 billion US dollars just for e-commerce alone. Obviously, take a lot being the proud child that it is was number one. Um, but yeah. Guys, so when I say there is potential and opportunity, there 100% is. And again, for those of you who are wanting to push out products, right, please get it out of your head that everything needs to be perfect right now. I've read so many stories and I've been part of so many webinars where people were like, oh, they sold for tea. And before, like initially, it was just sold in an envelope. Literally an envelope. They just sprinkled the tea leaves in there and people bought it until they could, you know, eventually get packaging and, you know, build their way up. Please don't think that your brand needs to be super, you know, fit and ready for market the minute it gets rolled out. can tell you Coco wasn't like that. Kim will tell you. We phone suppliers. We were trying to find ways to white label. Eventually, I started, you know, making the products myself. And then I designed my own labels. Also, the reason why you should get Canva. You can do your own logo. You can do your own labeling. Guys, there are so many ways that you can empower yourself to earn money through e-commerce in South Africa. Again, also with, um, with Canva, you can do your e-books on there. You can do your principles on there. Don't sleep on it. It's 200 bucks a month for the pro version. It's really not going to break the bank, sort of. But again, I don't know what your financial situation is. But yes, let me not have this live going on for too long. We are going to, like I mentioned, do a series. Um, I'm getting a few people on board who are going to discuss um, taxes with you guys and obviously, you know, the business setup of things with regards to e-commerce. Um, there's going to be guys that will chat to you about um, e-commerce marketing, so from a social media side, because you need to obviously spend money to make money. And the other one, um, hopefully, E2 Value Ani, I'm putting on the spot, we can discuss branding um, for, you know, e-commerce stores and from packaging and all of that and how to position yourself in the market. But we can discuss that offline. But yeah, essentially, I want to bring on some other thought leaders and experts into the space to equip you guys. And yeah, let's all make some money. It's about time. I think they said 2021 is like where the money resides. Hello. <laughs> but yeah, guys, if you have any more questions, um, just pop it down in the comment below, uh, comment box below, sorry. And if you don't, I'm going to save the live. And yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow on E2's live. Also discussing e-commerce, but slightly different. <laughs> Anyone? No. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. And thank you so much for joining the live. Also, this is my first live. So thank you for being patient and for all my little slurs and hiccups. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for an informative session. Oh, yes. Again, a webinar for Luliba Market on Thursday, I'll be speaking there as well. Got a lot of speaking engagements this week. But check it out, guys. I'll see you. Have a good evening. Bye.